So this lecture is analyzing collisions. It is section 5.3 in your textbook. So we, uh, we talked about conservation of momentum. We know that momentum is conserved um, in a collision. Uh, but uh, is energy conserved? So this is a different question. And uh, you'll see that uh, um, uh, there's really two types of collisions. One in which the energy is conserved uh, and one in which uh, the kinetic energy is not conserved. Sorry, I should say kinetic energy. Um, so let's look at uh, uh, a collision involving a Newton's cradle. Uh, Newton's cradle is that, uh, oh, that image you see on the left. Um, there are uh, uh, five spheres. Uh, they are equal mass. And when one hits the, uh, uh, when the one that's, uh, th that is angled there, that one hits the second sphere, um, it will transfer its momentum to that sphere, which will then transfer its momentum um, to the next one, and so on and so on. And the momentum gets conserved through that collision. Uh, but also, um, the kinetic energy uh, of the sphere um, is conserved because the kinetic energy of the sphere, um, if you've ever seen a Newton's cradle, you kind of see that the, the energy kind of, uh, it keeps on kind of um, bouncing back and forth almost at the same angle. Now while I say the kinetic energy is conserved, it's not 100% conserved, uh, but it is a, uh, it's not a perfectly elastic collision, but it is an elastic collision because a, 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 a big portion of that kinetic energy is conserved. Look at another collision, a collision between two vehicles. Um, the kinetic energy is not conserved because we typically in a collision, you can imagine we have two fast moving vehicles, they collide and they are now moving at a uh, velocity of zero. So they've lost all of their kinetic energy. A collision is an example of a more um, inelastic collision. And uh, in, this, uh, in this course, we're gonna focus more on perfectly elastic and perfectly inelastic collisions. Although, in reality, um, uh, collisions th that we typically observe are um, neither perfectly inelastic or perfectly elastic. They're, they're usually um, somewhere along the, that spectrum. So the Newton's cradle is a closer to perfectly elastic collision, um, although it is not 100% perfectly elastic. But we'll get into that a little bit more, I'll, although I'll mention it a bit more. In this course, we won't be studying that more. You'll study that more when you get into your uh, uh, further year um, physics courses in university. So as we were saying about the elasticity of a collision, um, uh, that features what divides the collisions into two classes. Um, we have the class where the kinetic energy is conserved, that's the elastic, and the class where the kinetic energy is not conserved, that's the inelastic. But again, like I was saying, uh, in reality, our collisions that we observe are somewhere uh, between these two perfect cases. Please copy this down, the definition for elastic collision and inelastic collision. The elastic collision is when the momentum and kinetic energy are both conserved. The inelastic collision is when the momentum is conserved but not the kinetic energy. So one way to determine if a collision is elastic or inelastic is by calculating the kinetic energy before and after the collision. Um, so the momentum is always conserved. So the momentum before and momentum after has to be zero. So the difference between the momentum before and momentum after has to be zero. But if we, um, if we check out the kinetic energy before and after and we compare those and see that they are uh, the same, then it's elastic. If they're not the same, then it's an inelastic collision. So what you'll see here, um, I've pulled up an applet from um, a website called FET, and uh, I'll post a link to this um, on the announcements in our in our course website. But uh, this FET website has a series of uh, simulations for uh, physics and chemistry and, and biology, um, and I, I I particularly like these these. Uh, this collision uh, applet. So I'll show you how this works. Um, this will give us an example of perfectly elastic and perfectly inelastic collisions. And I'll show you what a collision looks like when it's neither perfectly elastic or inelastic. So right now I have two objects. They have the same mass. They both have the mass of two kilograms. Their momentum, the momentum before is two kilogram meters per second. 
uh, for the first object, it's zero for the second object. Um, you'll see that the momentum will be conserved in this uh, collision. Um, the velocity of the first object is one meter per second to the right. And our kinetic energy is one half of the uh, mass times the velocity squared. So one half times two times the velocity, which is one squared, is going to be one joule. So if this is a perfectly elastic collision, as you can see um, on this bar here, I've had it set to 100% elastic, we will have the kinetic energy conserved throughout this collision. Now, what I'd uh, like to show you is um, when these two objects collide, um, if it's a perfectly elastic collision, we're going to have this entire kinetic energy transferred to the second object. Th similar to um, a Newton's cradle idea, where the one sphere hits the other sphere and then the, uh, the, the, the object kind of transfers all of its energy. Um, that will mean that the first object will lose all of its energy and it will stop completely. So let's see what this looks like. So our first object hit the second object, it stopped. The momentum of the first object was zero before. Um, the momentum of the second object after is two. So it's transferred its momentum. There's a conservation of momentum, but there's also the conservation of kinetic energy. It's kind of transferred all of its kinetic energy, but in this case, uh, it's transferred all of its velocity because they have the same mass. So all of its velocity was transferred to the second object which means that um, its velocity is now zero. The second object has a velocity of one. So let's play around with this a bit and uh, let's see if we can um, uh, make this four times smaller. Sorry. So it's four times smaller of an object. Um, it's going at one meter per second, so now its kinetic energy is a quarter because we've cut its, its mass down by a quarter. Uh, its momentum decreased by a quarter. Um, we'll still have the same situation where it's going to hit, but now that there is a disparity in terms of the masses, um, the force applied by the second mass on the first mass will cause it to have a velocity going uh, in the left direction. Um, so there will be both objects moving after this uh, in this elastic collision. Although, um, what we're going to notice is that uh, um, the kinetic energy is going to be conserved. So there's going to be something interesting with those velocities. So let's, let's hit the play button and then we'll discuss. So what happened here, um, if we add our momentum together, uh, our total momentum before was 0 0.5. Our total momentum after, minus 0 0.3 plus uh, 0 0.8. So it's still 0 0.5. Our um, kinetic energy before was 0 0.25, our kinetic energy after is 0 0.25. Um, now our velocity before was 1 meter per second. Uh, our velocity after here is um, uh, 0.4 for the, the larger object and uh, 0.6 going to the left for the smaller object. If we uh, find the difference between these, so if we did um, velocity of object 2 subtract the velocity of object 1, we'd still have a velocity of 1. So it's almost as if the velocity was conserved here. Now, um, where the, uh, the values come from, this is, um, uh, this is essentially the velocity of the second object is 2 fifths of the original velocity. The velocity of the first object is 3 fifths going to the left of the original uh, velocity. And um, uh, that is, uh, uh, we're going to get into the calculations a bit later, but uh, um, once, you, once you see the formulas, you'll be able to figure out ways to calculate that. Now, that was an example of elastic collisions. Let's uh, go back to our original mass and energy, um, and let's check what happens if we have a perfectly inelastic collision. So this is a collision where... Um, uh, the kinetic energy is not conserved. So, in this case, our kinetic energy after is going to be uh, a value that is less than one joule. So let's see what happens when these hit. So, our momentum before was two. 
our momentum after is still 2 kilogram meters per second to the right. Our momentum has been conserved. Our velocity before was 1. Um, it's almost as if our velocity has been conserved in this perfectly inelastic collision because we have, it's still uh, 1 meter per second going to the right, so 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Uh, but when we calculate our kinetic energy now, we have um, uh, masses of 2 um, times 1 half uh, times 0 0.5 squared. So we've actually cut the energy in half, the kinetic energy in half. So that's, uh, that's an example of a perfectly inelastic collision. Now again, let's look at what happens when we uh, switch this down to uh, a half and restart. Sorry, I'm going to move this back here. So when these hit, you'll see that uh, uh, now, um, you can't really see that too well. So I'll move it a bit farther away. Now our, um, our momentum has been conserved. It was still 0.5. Uh, but it's uh, because our, our masses are different, um, our velocity before was 1 meter per second. Our velocity after is not a sum of 1 meter per second. Now our kinetic energy has decreased by uh, a significant amount. So uh, in a perfectly inelastic collision, um, you don't have that kind of conservation of energy, so you don't have that conservation of velocity. Unless both objects have the same um, mass, would you see something like that? So this was, again, our original situation. Uh, let's move this back up to 2, and I'll show you uh, just an example. You don't need to know these ones too much, but what happens if we have a collision that is uh, midway between elastic and inelastic? So these two objects hit. We have a loss of kinetic energy, um, but uh, we have the objects not sticking together. So there's a bounce back uh, by object two. And the more, um, sorry, just a second here. I just want to make sure you can see everything. Uh, the more, um, uh, where's that kinetic energy at? There we go. The more elastic something is, so I'll do something that's 77% uh, elastic, uh, the larger the bounce back and the less loss of kinetic energy. So here's an example of that. So our kinetic energy went from 0.25 to 0.17. And the more inelastic a collision is, so we'll do a 20% collision, uh, the, the, the kind of the, the weaker that bounce back is and the more the objects tend to stick together there's also going to be a greater loss of energy. So we went from 0.25 to 0 0.07. Um, and you can see that the objects kind of, uh, um, it appears almost as if they kind of stuck together for a longer period of time. So that's, uh, that's an example of the, these types of collisions. Now why I wanted to show you the mixture between the inelastic and the elastic collision is that sometimes you'll have problems that are not perfectly elastic or perfectly inelastic. So you will um, uh, need to be aware that you can use conservation of momentum for those problems, um, but you cannot use some of the other equations we're going to look at in the next two lectures about perfectly elastic and perfectly inelastic collisions. And in a question, unless you can determine that the collision is perfectly elastic or inelastic, you can't assume that it is either. So we will have to be, uh, you'll have to be aware of that. Um, I'll go through that again uh, in the next two lectures on perfectly elastic and perfectly inelastic collisions. So let's just move this away. We'll go back to our, uh, our lecture here. Um, so here's a question. Uh, we're asked to uh, uh, determine if this collision is elastic or inelastic. So it's a, an object that's uh, 0 0.5 kilograms. Uh, it's moving at 5 meters per second east. It collides head on with a stationary object that's 1 kilogram. Um, and the 0.5 kilogram object rebounds directly backward at 1.2 meters per second. So it says, was the collision elastic? So we know our momentum before has to equal our momentum after. Um, and our uh, momentum before is MAVA uh, plus MBVB. That equals MAVA uh, prime plus MBVB prime. Uh, MA is uh, 0 0.5, uh, VA is 5, 
to the east. I just won't write the east right now. Um, I'll use negatives for that. So MB is 1. Uh, VB is stationary, so this is a 0. MA is 0 0.5. Uh, VA is negative 1.2 because it's going backward, it's going to the west. Um, and then we have uh, MB, which is 1, and we have VB, which is um, a value we need to solve for in this problem in order to solve for uh, um, our kinetic energy. So normally I would rearrange this first. Actually, I should have done that. I didn't. I apologize. So I'll just rearrange it now. Um, this ends up with, uh, this value is going to be 0. So uh, we have, um, and that's a 1 in front of there, so we have 0 0.5 times 5 uh, plus 0 0.5 times 1.2. And that works out to um, 3.1 meters per second. Now we need to find out our kinetic energy before. So E K equals one half um, only M A V A squared. Um, so that's going to be one half of zero or sorry five no zero point five rather and five squared, which is going to work out to six point two five joules. And we have, I'll just do it up here, EK prime, our kinetic energy after, is going to be the sum of uh, 1 half MA VA prime squared plus 1 half MB VB prime squared. That's 1 half of 0 0.5. Uh, VA is 5, no oh, sorry, it's not 5, it's um, uh, 1.2, it's negative 1.2, plus 1 half of 1 times 3.1 squared, and this works out to 5.165 joules. So because our EK is not equal to our EK prime, uh, therefore, so we'd say since this is the case, therefore, collision is inelastic. Notice how we don't say it's perfectly inelastic. We're going to get into that a bit later. Um, and the, the reason why we don't say it's perfectly inelastic is because we've only just proved that it's elastic. Any collision that's not uh, 100% elastic can be considered as an inelastic collision because it has inelastic properties. Uh, here's another question. We're just going to kind of talk through this one. It says car A has a mass of 1,800 kilograms. It's traveling north at 46 kilometers per hour. Car B has a mass of 2,500 kilograms. It's traveling east at 38 kilometers per hour. Um, so the cars stick together after the collision. Uh, it says, would the cars be located more to the north or to the east? So you'd have to find the momentum of the these vehicles. And um, the momentum of the larger massed vehicle is greater than the momentum of the smaller uh, vehicle with the smaller mass. So they would be moving more towards the east direction because the car B, which is the more massive vehicle, is traveling to the east. Now, is the collision elastic or inelastic? Anytime the, qu the question says that the, the objects stick together, um, you would say that that collision is inelastic. It may not be perfectly inelastic, but there is a there's an inelastic, uh, or rather, if they do stick together, it would have to be perfectly inelastic. I'll, I'll mention that as well. So that is, uh, uh, that's the solution to this problem. So here again, we're, uh, we're, I was already mentioning this earlier, but I'll go through it again. So a perfectly elastic collision is an idealized situation where friction and other external forces are negligible. Uh, so momentum and kinetic energy are perfectly conserved. And uh, the perfectly inelastic collision is uh, one in which the two objects stick together um, and the two objects have the same final velocity. So perfectly elastic and perfectly inelastic collisions occur in isolated systems in which the effects of friction and other external forces are negligible. Uh, perfectly elastic and perfectly inelastic collisions are extremely rare and represent idealized cases. 
Um, so most situations fall between those two extremes. Now we observe them because they're very useful um, in, in a, observing Newton's laws of motion. Um, so that's why we study them. Uh, they're also, in order to have an understanding of a collision uh, that is somewhere on that spectrum between elastic, perfectly elastic and perfectly inelastic, um, it's good to understand those two extremes first.